support that. Because we have so much to go over. Diversity and inclusion is, is all the rave. It's the buzz phrase. But nobody really knows exactly what that means. And I want you to educate us all, not just on what it means to you, but how, you know, companies can benefit from having someone like yourself on board. So, you know, you're, you're at MTV 2017, 2018. I know, and, and then you go, I'm assuming, directly over to H&M to become their head of diversity and inclusion. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. In, what was it, January 2018, mm-hmm. H&M has one of the biggest uh, campaign marketing blunders ever. Comes across extremely insensitive, yeah. tone deaf, out of touch, um, with a little boy wearing a coolest monkey in the jungle shirt. Mm-hmm. Were you hired as a result of that or were you there at the time of that rollout? So I was not there when they had that photograph and the image of the boy wearing the sweater. Um, I think with the response from the customers and the employees, very unexpected response, I would say, from them. Um, I think the company had to do an internal inventory as to what their processes were, what they stood for, and how they're going to move forward. And then figure out the strategy of how they're going to move forward once they've identified the gaps. I Creating this role was part of that. Mm-hmm. So the role was created as a result of them going through their own inventory and reflection and realizing oh, wait, we have some serious gaps here. We're lacking some serious things. We need someone to help create strategy, framework, and push us forward in that. Um, So then that's when the role came about. So I don't, for them, because I wasn't there yet, I don't know the timing from, you know, uh, media outcry to when we decided the role was going to be there because I joined much later in the year. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I think it's important to say as as a customer of the brand, I too was taken aback when I saw the image, you know, I was like, Oh, like, wow. You know, I, I think we all were as an, yeah. I, th- yeah. I think we all were and it was justified. It wasn't just, Oh yeah. Uh, you know, these days you have to watch what you say. You have to watch what you do. There is a cancel culture out there. We know mm-hmm. this in this particular incident. I remember seeing the ad me having a, a, a marketing background and doing that for so many years of my career, I looked at that in, you know, as a black man and as a marketer, I'm like, what the heck? How did this happen? Yeah. Yeah. No, it was the same. And then I was in the same boat. And I know many of us was like talking with our own circle of friends and just trying to understand and figure things out. And, and to be honest, I, I, I made up my own decisions and I kind of like left it alone in the mix of me trying to figure out what was next and what my next move was going to be. Um, and then I started seeing and hearing that they were looking for someone to support in their inclusion diversity efforts. And after going back and forth many a times with my um, trust circle, you know, I was like, you know what? why not? Like, why not try to go in there and and take a seat at the table and be part of the change that is necessary that we, our people as a black woman, as a black man, want to see, you know, and, and, and not just leave it or assume that they have it or they were going to do. So when I, when I was afforded the opportunity to serve as their first um, head of inclusion diversity for North America, I I took it and I took it with a sense of pride because, um, and also really understand that there was a lot of work that needed to be done. And it's a brand that is a household name that many people know, and it, but it's, it's also a huge organization that's based in Sweden, you know? So it's like, how do you navigate that? And how do you make sure that you implement things that are going to be sustainable and they're going to be authentic and filled with integrity? Um, and that's really the challenge. So when a lot of people say, and, and to be honest, I get really frustrated when people think that diversity and inclusion is like no big deal, or it's a joke, or it's just 
held by black women. Uh, you know, those are all stereotypes that we, especially as a community, need to not be a part of. And we need to make sure that we are advocating for those people that are taking on those roles. Because I would tell you, they are working extremely hard to make sure that representation is included in these organizations and within these industries. You know, so I think it's really important that we are a bit more empathetic to those that are leading in. And it's not only black women. There are other people there. You know, some faces are just a little bit more prominent than others um, because of maybe brand association, et cetera. But it's it's a it's a job that is tasking not only externally, but only but also internally, too, to think that. I, this happened and then you to my community and you still need to help find the solution for that. And that's not an easy task to do. I think the better question is making sure that these individuals have the correct amount of influence and authority that they need in order to drive change within the organization, as opposed to saying that their job, that their job is um, not worthy or is not impactful or whatever terminologies people use every now and then. You know, diversity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. We hear this terminology, but for our audience, what exactly is diversity and what is inclusion? Yeah, yeah. How are they separate? Mm -hmm. it, you know, because you can be from the outside looking in and you can have a different meaning or you can think that those two words mean the same thing. So to somebody like yourself, who is the head of diversity and, and inclusion for an international brand, what exactly is it? No, it's such a great question to ask, too, because actually, if you go country by country, the definition of diversity is very different. And it's different because of the makeup of that country, right? So if I go back to my roots and think about how would someone identify diversity in Nigeria, it's probably very different than how we would say diversity Correct. is in the U.S., right? Um, and, and really, but the, the core of diversity is a mix of people. As a mix of people, mix of characteristics, mix of identities, mix of beliefs. Like that's what it is. It's all the differences, things that we can see visibly. So you can see my race, you can see my gender. And then, but what about all those things that we that are invisible? My marital status, my education level, my working style. So that's what diversity is, is that mix of everything, like all those different things. And then each person or each institution, each group needs to identify what are your main um, priorities with diversity. So like I mentioned, maybe in Nigeria, it's not race, but maybe it's more of tribal religion, right? Like your tribes that you're part of, or maybe it's age diversity we're looking for there, or gender diversity. Where in the U.S., probably the first thing that most people focus on is probably um, between race and gender. So it just depends on where you are. And then inclusion is like taking this mix of everything, of identities, characteristics, beliefs, et cetera, and bringing them together and how do they put, how do they work in a puzzle? Where are you finding the appropriate pieces where each thing fits in, where you feel that you can be who you want to be, and there's a sense of belonging in there as well. So that's what inclusion is. Inclusion is making you feel welcome. The other um, one I want to just throw in there is a piece of equity. Mm -hmm. and, and equity, sometimes you'll see that you see diversity, inclusion, diversity, inclusion, equity, equity, like it, it kind of moves around depending on who it is. And equity just really means like, do you have a stake in the ground? Right. Like if I'm planting a seed, do I own that seed? Can I watch it harvest? Are you giving me the tools to let it grow? Um, if you're thinking about the organization, where's my voice in the organization? How am I able to move? Do I have the same access and opportunity as you do, as my boss does? Like so really deep down it's like, OK, yes, you brought me in. I'm seeing other diverse people. Great. I do feel included. Yes, I feel the culture is there, but do I truly have access? And I think it's important that we also try to talk about that a little bit more too. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. 
If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.